Let's give the Lord a clap offering right now. Come on. Give him a big clap right now. Amen. Well, you can stay standing for a moment because we're just going to dive right into the word. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited to be here tonight. And uh, first of all, I just always want to honor your pastors. I love them to life. And I think you guys are so blessed to have some of the greatest pastors in the entire world. Right, Pastor Marie, Pastor Josiah, we love you guys. They are, I was just telling them in the back right now, I go, you guys are, you guys are the, the pastors of Orange County. Like you're the next big thing, you know. And, uh, but they're so humble and, and uh, you know, you can always tell someone, you can always tell a couple how they are by how they pray. And uh, they, 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 you could tell, like when they pray, like power comes out of them. You know, I mean, I'm like, this guy just walked up here with his little skinny jeans and, and he prophesying to people like it's like normal, you know? And then she goes up there and she's just like, lays the wood down, you know what I mean? I'm like, I need to get saved, you know what I mean? So you just got power, power, power packed pastors and you don't have power unless you have prayer. And so, um, so that I'm so, I'm so honored. I, I love them. They've been a blessing to me. I have a word today for you. It's going to be powerful. I'm going to give you some secrets today that I really believe through the word. It's going to set the course for your, for, for this year. You ready for it? Open up your Bibles, if you can, to 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15, a very familiar passage, but there's revelation in the story. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 says, Samuel said, has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the Holy Lord and the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. I want to speak to you today a message I've entitled, what I have for my life is really the year of obedience. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation and give our minds illumination that we would experience transformation. God, I pray you give us a mind to, to perceive and a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, will never be the same. In Jesus' name, come on. And all the people that came out to Revival Night say, amen, amen. You may be seated today in Jesus' name. A few months ago, I was on a run. I love to run. And um, I kind of have this, kind of this routine, this direction I always go. And, and I guess the night before, there was a, a big windstorm that came. And so when I got up in the morning, I got dressed, stretched, and went for a run. And as I was running, I, I saw this tree kind of bent over that I've seen many times running by it. And as I got closer to it, you could see the, the big old grapefruits that were, that were on the tree and and, and yet the difference was, was that the tree was so bent over that it, it, it exposed the roots and the roots were sticking out from, from the ground. And so it caught my attention and it remained in my mind as I kept on running. And I, I heard the Lord as clear as day say, Obed, all these years, You've prayed for fruits, but it's actually the roots that produces the fruit. And he said, in all these years, you've prayed for increase, and you've prayed for abundance, and you've prayed for souls, and you've prayed for all these things, but you know, you can have so much more fruit if you actually took care of the root. And he spoke these words to me. He says, Obed, the year, the 2024 is going to be the year of obedience. And that obedience is the root that will eventually grow all the fruit. That it is impossible for your life to bear much fruit when you're living a life or you're not living a life 
of obedience. And oftentimes what happens is that we get kind of clips of stories. And, and when you think about this story that, that I just read, it was actually Samuel getting a word from the Lord and speaking to Saul. And the Bible says that God spoke to Samuel and Samuel gave a word to Saul. And he told Saul, there's a grace that's coming upon you. And that grace that's coming upon you is to go out and destroy the Amaleks. Now, what you got to understand about that is that the Amaleks, 400 years prior, attacked Israel at its most darkest, weakest, and vulnerable moment. And the Bible says that God took record of that. Let me just pause here for a moment. That God knows that every attack that has come against you, when you've been vulnerable and the weakest and the darkest time in your life, God has recorded that. And it doesn't matter if it's five years, 20 years, or 400 years, vengeance is always going to come from our God. And he will fight those battles for you. And so this grace comes upon Saul. And I believe that as you step in the kingdom expansion and you begin to live out a life of obedience, there's going to be a special grace that's coming upon this place. A grace this year that you could not defeat some devils in 2023. Now you're going to defeat them. Come on, somebody, in 2024. There's a grace that's coming. And so this grace that was given to Saul would give him the ability, the anointing, to destroy an adversary that Israel for years struggled to defeat. And I really believe that 2024 is going to be a year for the body of Christ that the enemies that we could not defeat or the struggles that we've had that become cyclical in our lives, you're going to have a special grace and a special anointing to break those yokes and destroy those yokes on your life. I believe it. And so he, so Saul goes out and the Bible says that they went out and they were told to destroy it all. Yet Saul spared the king. And not only did he spare the king, but he took the finest of cattle and he kept it for himself. He knew that if he would spare the king, now listen to me, that the king would create a statue of himself. And all of a sudden now Samuel gets a word from God. And there's a conversation that only this one time a Hebrew word appears as Samuel is having a conversation with God that it actually reveals the mind of God and the emotion of God of what just took place. And that Hebrew word can be expressed in a sentence that God said to Samuel, I wish I would not have chosen him. Hear me today. I wish I would not have chosen him. Samuel goes to Saul and he says, Saul, there's been a grace that came upon you. And you were supposed to wipe the Amaleks completely out. Why did you spare the king? Why did you spare some of these, the best of the cattle? And Saul began to give his excuses. Well, because I wanted to do it for the Lord. I wanted to bring him a sacrifice. And God was, and Samuel says, don't talk like that. When God says to wipe it all out, he doesn't mean to keep some and bring it as a sacrifice. And, and Samuel said, Saul, this grace is going to be lifted. And the grace was lifted after, off of Saul. And the Bible says that there was another person 
that down the road, Samuel would prophesy over, who was in the back of the field in obscurity. Nobody gave him an applaud when he defeated a bear. Nobody gave him accolades when he defeated a lion. But God knew that there was somebody that had his heart that was completely in obedience with God. And God says, that anointing and that grace that was on Saul, I'm going to put it on the life of David. And David will become the king of Israel. And David will begin the lineage of the Savior named Jesus Christ. I'm here to let you know that if you will take this grace and you will handle it and you will be obedient with God. God will take your places no eyes have seen, no ear has heard, because this is the year of obedience. But there's more to this story. You see, when you don't have nothing, and all of a sudden you get something, and then God blesses you to have everything. There often comes a time in your life when your enemy is not the fight. The enemy becomes yourself. Because often we're no different than Saul. We serve in church and thank God for dream teamers. And I love the dream teamers but you don't need to go around telling people how many times a week do you serve? See, because then all you're doing is putting up a statue. You don't need to go on Facebook and tell people that you pray five hours a day. Because then all you're doing is erecting a statue for yourself. You see, what, what, what made God say it only one time, I wish I would have never chose him. Or I wish I would have never given him the grace to prosper. Because if I knew that he would want to erect a statue and instead of the glory going to me, it would go to him. And the Bible says God shares no glory with nobody. Listen, at the end of the day, you don't got to tell people how many hours you pray. You don't got to tell how many how much money you make, all these businesses you have. No, what you need to show is the fruit that God has and let the fruit do the talking for you. That's all you got to do. Well, Pastor Obed, I serve every weekend. Well, thank God you do. Because you used to be in the clubs every weekend. But then the question is, is why do you even say that? And we almost tend to cross the line when what was started as obedience now in some sense becomes a sacrifice. Like, like, God chose me. God chose you. And you said yes. Since when does your obedience now become a sacrifice? Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm sacrificing all this stuff. And no, 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 you didn't have the stuff in the first place. And when he gave you all the stuff was because you were obedient. And now that you got the stuff, when you didn't have nothing, and now you have something, and then some of you have everything, now you're calling it a sacrifice? You mean, Pastor Obed, I got to give to a building fund, and you're calling that a sacrifice? That's not a sacrifice, sweetheart. That's obedience, because you didn't have that in your account five years ago. But because of your obedience, God filled your house to overflow. Don't call a sacrifice what should be obedience in Jesus' name. But I'm helping someone today. 
because you're prospering. And God wants to prosper your life. We got to realize that partial obedience is complete disobedience. And then we get to a place where in some degree we now have selective obedience. So it's like, well, I'm going to obey God here, but I'm not going to obey him over here. Like I can pray and wake up at six in the morning and join pastor for prayer. That's obedience. But man, I'm in a relationship that I got some carnal things happening. And at the end of the day, that's called selective obedience. And here's the problem. You want the fullness of God's blessing when you're only giving him partial obedience. It doesn't work that way. You got to give God the fullness of your obedience. Then he gives you the fullness of the blessing. We can no longer have selective obedience. So God knew that when the children of Israel would be delivered out of Egypt, they were there long enough to take on a mindset that would keep them victimized from stepping into something that they didn't believe they deserved. The Israelites were comfortable building homes for everybody else as they own it, but they're just comfortable renting it. The children of Israel were comfortable just having enough. When they saw everybody they were working for have more than enough. And so for 430 years, generation after generation, grandma would say, Miha, we just have enough. We just thank God we have enough. And then, and then, mijo, listen, you're going to work hard and you're going to make everybody else's dreams come true, but we're just satisfied that we have a roof over our head and we have some food in our cupboards. And for 430 years, this was the mentality that was being built up. And so when God opened up the door for the children of Israel to walk out of Egypt, it's why he told them, don't leave without going to every house and taking the gold and taking the silver. Because I'm not just delivering you out of the hands of Pharaoh, but I am returning back to you everything that was taken from you that belonged to you and this is what we do when when we get saved well we thank God that I'm saved I thank God that God delivered me out of Egypt and now I'm headed to the promised land no friends God just didn't deliver you out of Egypt that's not the fullness of salvation the fullness of salvation is the fact that everything you lost while you were a sinner, God has to return it back to your life. That means gold and silver that you spent in the world is going to be given back to you seven times greater in Jesus' name. But the thing is, we don't talk a lot about that. Because we still have an Egyptian mindset. And the thing is, God knew it. And he said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the laws of blessing. I'm not going to give you just blessings, but I'm going to put them into law. Deuteronomy 28 could really be categorized as the constitution of blessings. And look what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. It says, now it shall come to pass, which means if God says it's going to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. If you, now watch this, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. When Jesus stood up 
And he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Listen to me. The anointing comes upon you. But it's the blessing that overtakes you. Let me rewind that one more time. It is the anointing that comes upon you. The ability to go beyond your natural self. It is the blessing that overtakes you. When you have the anointing, you'll have the blessing. When the anointing is on you, the blessing will overtake you. And he says this, if you obey my voice, watch this, the voice of the Lord your God. So what does obedience mean? In simple terms, it means this, hearing the word of God and acting on it. That's what it means. Hearing the word of God and acting on it. In other words, watch this, obedience doesn't begin with an action. It begins with the word. He says, if you obey my voice, in other words, watch this. I'm going I'm to give you the steps of obedience. Watch this. The first thing is, is that you got to hear it. That's your ear. Then you receive it. It's your heart. Then you believe it. It's your mind. Then you obey it. That's your action. You got to hear it. It's your ears. You got to receive it. It's your heart. You got to, watch this, you got to believe it, it's your mind. And then you obey it, and that's your action. Let me tell you why majority of people in the church don't walk in the fullness of God's obedience. It's because all we do is hear it, but we don't receive it. See, faith comes by hearing. You hear it. You heard it. But you didn't sit there and say, God, I received that. So it got to your ears, but it never sank into your heart. Which means it doesn't show up in your mind. Which means now you have no action. So what a man thinketh, so, does, so is he. And so you, it's difficult sometimes to obey, uh, to obey God when you haven't received his word. This is why when people said, the pastor goes, I was up here earlier and he was like, man, you know, God wants to bless your finances, bless your finances. And half the room can be like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. I, I hear it. But then you wonder why you, you have a sick, a cycle of being broke. The reason why is because you heard it. But you didn't sit there and say, man, I received that. See, I, I received that. See, now it goes from your ear to your heart. Then all of a sudden, it begins to renew your mind. That's when you believe it. And then when it comes time to do it, you act on it. I hear it. I receive it. I believe it. And then I obey it. What is it? It's God's word. So if I'm looking at God's word and I'm saying, God, you want me to obey you? Yeah, I want you to obey me. Okay, God, if you want me to obey you, then like, I, I need to know what you think of me. Like, what, what do you think of me, right? Like, like, like if I'm, if I'm going to obey somebody, I want to know what they think of me. Not just, I'm going to obey you. What do they think of me? Well, let me tell you what God thinks of you. Let me, tell, let me give you a couple of things really quick. And then I'm going to get into the seven blessings and you're about to lose your mind. Well, he says you're a new creation. That's what he says. He says, watch this. You're an heir to the blessing of Abraham. That means there's no more excuses on how you were raised. There's none. Well, my daddy left me. My mama left me. No, no, no. That was your old life. When you became a brand new creation, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. Come on, you're an heir to Abraham. 
That means you're supposed to be blessed going in and blessed coming out. That you're blessing upon blessing and multiplying upon multiplying. No, your days of subtraction are in your past and the days of multiplication, come on, are in your future. Why? Because God says, I'm an heir to Abraham. He also says, you're more than a conqueror. So you don't have an excuse no more this year to sit there and be overwhelmed when you're called to overcome. You're more than a conqueror. That, that's what he said about you. Well, he also says, watch this, you're an imitator of God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. What is he telling you? You don't have an excuse to not be kind to people. You can't be rude and be a Christian. He says, because you're an imitator of me. You reflect me. A dog doesn't. A cat doesn't. You do. He says, you're highly favored. Not just favored. You're highly favored. Which means you should have the confidence and go every meeting. Going in, getting that business, and coming out and walking out with that deal. You're highly favored. That's what he says about you. All right, here it is. Philippians 4.13, you can accomplish all things. Not some things. You can accomplish all things. Which gives you no more an excuse to sit there and say, I don't know if we can do this. No, then you're functioning from your old person. And you're not walking in the obedience of God. So let me give you, watch this. Let me give you seven blessings of obedience from Deuteronomy 28. You're going to go crazy, man. Here it is. Number one is a professional blessing. It's a professional blessing. Here's the blessing. You will be recognized for your skills and expertise with no need for self-promotion. You will be recognized for your skills and expertise with no need for self-promotion. Which means you don't have to go around telling people what you do. You're walking in a favor that in a grace that's been given upon you, and he's going to give you supernatural skills to handle the toughest problems. And guess what? Promotion and raises are going to come because guess what? You're walking in the obedience of God. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse, verse 3, this is not obed, this is the word. It says, your towns and your fields will be blessed. That, that means God says, listen, everywhere you go professionally, your life's going to be blessed. Here's number two, a household blessing. It's your household blessing. What's the blessing, pastor? Your spouse and your children will benefit from your reflected favor. No, you didn't hear me. I said your spouse and your children will benefit from your reflected favor. A few days ago, my daughter came home and said, Dad, you ain't going to believe this. I said, what? She goes, I want $100 at school. I said, oh, I believe it. And she goes, no, Dad, this was amazing. I said, no, sweetheart, what you have to understand is that you reflect the favor that's on my life. Mama, daddy, let me tell you something. When your child comes home and says, Mom, dad, I got a raise at work, you ought to say, you ought to thank me. Because I'm walking in the favor of God and all shit's overflowing on your life and you're a beneficiary of it. That's why your children who are far from God, they're walking in a favor even though they're not right with God because the favor's on your life in Jesus' name. That's a blessing that God has for you. Well, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 4, your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and your flocks will be what? Blessed. That's a promise if you're walking in obedience. Here's number three, a supernatural provision supernatural provision in other words you won't lack for anything you need it doesn't mean you won't have everything you want it just means that you won't lack for anything you need so you're going to live in 2024 with every need in your life being met come on I'm prophesying right now 
I'm prophesying to a church that wants to be obedient and want to walk in the supernatural provision of God that rightfully belongs to you. You won't have no. People sit there and say, man, you're just blessed. I said, man, I don't have no needs. I have some wants. But I don't have no needs. I'm walking the supernatural provision of God. And when God begins to trust you with all the needs, then he'll begin to give you all you want. Are you hearing me? When you begin to say, man, there's times I sit there and I look at my life. I go, how in the heck did I get this? How, how, how did I even end up in this place? Well, I walk in a supernatural provision. It's all my life. Because listen, I've learned to just obey God. Even when I don't understand. Even when I don't feel like it. Even when my feelings are like, no, I ain't not forgiving that person. That person mean. And God says, no, 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 you need to. Guess what? They won't get the blessing, but you'll get the blessing. And I have to remind myself sometimes, don't allow other people's dysfunction to mess up your function. I got too much on the line. Come on, I'm believing for too much stuff. I got some miracles in motion right now that I don't need someone to disrupt that. I'm going to walk in the supernatural provision of God. All right, here's blessing number four. Blessing them, or Deuteronomy 28, verse 5, your fruit baskets and your bread boards will be blessed. Here it is, fa- number four, favor every day. Favor every day. Here's the blessing. The routines of life which grind so many down will invigorate you and bring you supernatural opportunities. What are you saying? When God gives you a vision, he gives you the energy to go after it. Listen to me. Talk to me, somebody. When God gives you a vision and he places a dream inside of you and you just obey God and say, God, in 2024, I'm not going to sit on the sideline. I'm going to open up that business. I'm going to go after my dream. That's what I'm going to do. God gives you the energy to do it. Now, let me tell you. When you walk in favor, here, I'm I'm going to drop some gold right now. Favor gives you the energy to accomplish the assignment for the opportunities that God lays in front of you. The enemy of favor is drama. Because favor energizes you, but drama sucks it all out of you. This is why you have to decide. If you're going to walk in the obedience of God and walk in the favor of God, you got to tell yourself in 2024, I got no drama in my life. I can't afford no more drama in my life. I don't need no vampire sucking energy out of me when I need that energy to accomplish the assignment. Come on, somebody that God has given me. Some of you need to start cutting some folks out. And be like, man, I can't hang no more. Because every time I get around you, sweet, man, baby, I'm sorry, man. But you know what? I leave so drained. When someone calls you and they're like, you know, can we talk? No, we can't talk. Unless you're going to tell me something positive, I need the energy that I got. I got to learn how to work my favor. And I can't give my favor to a bunch of drama people. When you're walking in divine favor, man, you got you 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 got to listen. The, the Holy Spirit told me this, Pastor Josiah, that these last couple of weeks. He says, "I'm going to teach you." Watch this, Pastor. I'm going to teach you how to steward the favor. That you will have energy to do multiple things because you've said no to drama. I had a situation come up just two days ago, some employees. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. 
Okay. Okay. I, he called me earlier, said some things. You're calling me now. I'm putting you on, I'm, 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 I'm attaching him in. What are you going to do? I said, I'm going to attach him in. So I attached him in. I said, hey, both of you guys both called me about this situation. We're going to get this thing resolved right now. And we're going to get it resolved right now because we need the energy and not the drama. Okay, right there. See, I, I wouldn't have done that two, three years ago. But because I got to learn how to steward the favor on my life, I don't need no drama no more. Like you need, tell some folks, save that drama for your mama, right? Look what the, look, this, this is what the word says. Not obey, this is what the word says. I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is what the word says. Listen to what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 28, verse 6. Wherever you go, it says, wherever you go, you got that, watch this. Wherever you go, and whatever you do, you will what? You mean wherever I go, and whatever I do, I'm going to be what? So there should be nothing in 2024 where you go and what you do without being what? So if God says make a right and you're like, no, Lord, I can't. Just understand wherever you go and whatever you do will be what? You'll be blessed. You're walking in the favor of God. Well, look what he says. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. In other words, he's saying you don't even have to pay attention because I need you to have the energy and not get distracted by drama. He says they will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter you from, uh, scatter you from seven. Watch this. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do. And here it is. He will fill your storehouses, not storehouse, storehouses. In other words, I got so much for you, you can't just put it in one place. You got to put it in another one as well. Come on, am I talking to some people that want to walk in supernatural favor? All right, I got to go. Number five, divine health, endurance, and a symbol of his goodness. Here's what it means. Here's the blessing. You will carry yourself with the energy and the anointing of a child of the king, resulting in divine opportunities to witness his faithfulness to others. Look what it says in Deuteronomy 28 as I close. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, the Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he swore he would do. Watch this. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord. Now watch this. And they will stand in awe of who? It does not say, Pastor Josiah, they'll stand, they'll stand in awe before God. They'll stand in awe of God. He says, no, I'm going to put that blessing so much on you that they're going to stand in awe of you. They're not even, they're going to, they're going to be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What's on you? Because whatever, oh, you go to that Freedom House Church, huh? That, that's where you go. Because all y'all look the same. You guys all walk in this, I don't know what it is. And it attracts people. And God says, watch this. They won't stand in awe of me, Obed. They're going to stand in awe of you. And they're going to sit there and scratch their head and go, how in the world does this person have this when I knew what they went through last year? How is that? Display of God's goodness. Here's number six, unmerited financial favor. Unmerited financial favor. Here's the blessing. Your family, your estate, and your business will supernaturally increase you shall be a lender and not a borrower. Come on, am I talking to someone? Here it is, business people. I'm about, to, I'm, I'm about to give you a word right now. Here it is. Here's the word. Watch, give me the scripture. Give me that scripture up there. Here it is. Watch this. The Lord will give you. Who's going to give it to you? Not your customers. Not your clients. Who gives it to you? So when you get that prosperity that he chooses what clients and customers it comes through, just know 
the Lord needs to stay more important than your customers and your clients. You can have excellence in your company, serving your customers and your clients, but you have, you better have better excellence serving the Lord because prosperity doesn't come from your clients and it doesn't come from your customers. Come on. It comes from who? It comes from the Lord. And so when the Lord chooses your customers and your clients and he uses them as a portal to give the blessing to you, guess who you need to return it back to? You need to return it back to who? The Lord. The Lord. Prosperity comes from him. I'm going into meetings. If I told you the names of these companies, you'd be like, holy smokes. But you know what? It's another day. Want to know why? Because God will choose them to be the portal to get the blessing through them to me. He can use anybody. They're not my source. My prosperity doesn't come from them. He just uses them to bring the blessing to me. And when we start taking care of our customers and clients more than we take care of the Lord in God's house, we better check ourselves, business people. Excellence doesn't begin with your clients. It begins in your prayer life, in your serving life, in your devotion life. And when you serve the Lord with excellence, your company will never lack excellence. Come on, are you hearing me? Here's number seven and I'm done. And I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Can I pray a blessing over you? Supernatural advancement. Supernatural advancement. Here's the blessing. You will be elevated to a position of favor and leadership among your peers. Look what Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 says. If you listen to these commands of the Lord, your God, that I'm giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you'll always be on what? On what? You're going to get so tired being at the top. But you're going to enjoy it because you spent most of your life being at the bottom. You ain't feeding off of crumbs no more. God has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You mean, Pastor Obed, I get all these blessings. They belong to you. If you obey the voice of the Lord. You mean I don't have to go work all these? No, no, the Lord will do it all for you. Your only job this year is to obey the voice of the Lord. And if I obey the voice of the Lord, he's going to add all these things to you. And then you look back and you go, Why haven't I had all this? Because maybe I had selective obedience and partial obedience as well. Could you imagine Freedom House, this entire spiritual family obeying the voice of the Lord? You'd pay your building off in cash. Am I right? You would pay it off. Because everybody is obeying the voice of the Lord. You wouldn't have enough, you wouldn't have enough church time to put videos together of testimonies of people getting raises and new opportunities and doors opening up and household salvation and kids getting saved, delivered and set free. You wouldn't even have all that time to put the testimonies together because the Lord has put a special grace upon this house for 2024 so that you walk in the obedience
obedience of God for kingdom expansion. That's what God wants to do for you this year in Jesus' name. That's what he wants to do. I, 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 I've said this. I have, this year for me, it's just about obeying the Lord. I, 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 I'm not trying to do all these things. I'm just, no, Lord, let me hear your word. Let me receive it. Let me believe it. And then I'll act on it. That's what I want to do. Won't you stand to your feet? Thanks so much for watching our service at Freedom House OC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's always my honor, my wife's honor to bring you God's word. And I know that God's best is in your future. Make sure to share, uh, click the bell icon so you're always up to date when new content comes out because we want to be a blessing to your life. We want this channel to be a channel that feeds your future and leads you closer to God. Hey, we love you. God bless.